So I did a project earlier this year that involved, I think, almost 30 bags of concrete. And I put these ones away for another day, and it rained all year. It was humid all year. Hard as a rock. Humidity went right into them. Now those are just trash or fill. Hey everyone. Tonight we're going to be building a community birdhouse. You just saw that concrete I had. Nope, can't use that. Can't store concrete. I guess if I ever have extra in the future, it's got to be returned immediately or used for something immediately. So I just went back to the store. I got three more bags of concrete that we'll use up tonight. It's the fast setting stuff. So once we set it up, half an hour, it'll have a good amount of its strength and we can put this thing up. So maybe you guys can tell what I'm doing already. We got four by four poles. This right here is 12 feet long. The other one I'm going to cut at four feet. We're going to bury it in the ground at least two feet. Pour concrete, backfill with dirt. But we're making this component here so that it can be taken down to add birdhouses, replace them, maintain them, clean them, paint them. Obviously, we won't take it down when there's birds in there. So the idea is we're going to leave a little bit of gap so it has enough room to pivot. We're going to put two carriage bolts down here that will be permanent. They don't come out. I'm going to put one here, which is going to be the hinge that pivots. This will be the pin holding everything up. So that should work out nice. If you ever have to do maintenance on it, you pull this pin out. The birdhouse, at least to me, won't be super heavy. Just slowly bring it down to the ground. Maybe have a piece of wood waiting so whatever birdhouses don't actually hit the ground. So that makes pretty good sense. So the first thing we're going to start doing tonight is we're going to assemble this thing. And I'm going to cut this at four feet, this one here. They only had 12 foot lengths for whatever reason, but we'll use the rest of that for something in the future. Then we're going to drill these holes. Got a good drill bit here that matches. It's slightly bigger than the bolts and these carriage bolts. Once we drill the hole, see how this part's square? Going to hit it really hard with a hammer like that. So it stays in there and we can tighten down the bolt on the other side. So this should go very well. Let's get to work. First things first, we're going to cut this at about four feet. Actually, that seems like not enough. If we're going to bury a good amount of it, and that thing pivots, it doesn't have to come all the way. It's actually okay. Uh, we'll do maybe, we'll try six feet. I really like how the saw has a light. I thought it was just for working when I got it. But you put the line in there and you see the shadow of the blade tells you exactly where it's going to cut. I love that. Nice. This saw makes work so easy compared to my old saw I used to use for this. I would have done this project last year with a reciprocating saw, and that's no accuracy with it. All right, everyone, time to drill some holes. It's held together with screws because I just used a level, made sure this was perfectly straight, and now the holes will go all the way through. We'll put the bolts in and then pull the screws back out that are just temporarily holding it. Hopefully we don't have too many issues with this big drill bit, like the drill not being powerful enough to run it. That was my only concern. First thing we're going to do is measure exactly where we want these bolts to be almost two inch gap right there so we should do them where hmm i did three and nine all right 
three and nine. Make sure it's right in the middle. All right, we got those perfect. Now let's drill. Ah, the Harbor Freight thing is broken somehow. That's what you get for a free drill. Let's go grab some ear muffs. Now this drill bit here was expensive because this one says it can go through nails and stuff in the wood without dulling. I knew that was going to happen. The drill cuts out because there's, it's going, it's too much for it. I just hope it doesn't get stuck because I can't easily pull this out. I'd have to unscrew it. Yeah. Drill's not powerful enough. But look, I can do action I can actually do it by hand. Let's see if we can get it out. You can't just hit reverse. It's got zero reversing power, this drill. And that barely ate in there any deeper. The first time we were doing this, I could hit the button a few more times. It would go a little further, a little further. Now when it stops, it's done, and it's not the battery. I just changed the battery out. Ah, done with this. And I, I have not done a project like this in a while, so it's going to just keep going. All right, let's see how our bolts will fit through there. Nice. Now we hit that with a hammer so it kind of locks in there. So it's got like a square in there. These bolts were more expensive than I thought they'd be. It was 20 bucks for the four. And where is the fourth one? I don't know where it went. Gotta find the fourth one. Oh man. I don't know where it went. That went in easier than I thought. Look at how wet the wood is, this fresh pressure treated wood. I like bled when I hit them. Perfect amount, look at that. This came through perfectly. Now this one will be our loosening one. 
And this one probably has to be loosened too when it comes down to use it as a hinge. So these two are going to get tightened down a whole ton. And these ones not so much because I have to use this hinge tonight. We're going to put this thing in the concrete with it hinged and I feel like that will actually hold itself in there straight while it cures up. The concrete I just bought cures in, or it hardens up in like half an hour. So it's not a big deal. Yeah, so we'll leave these guys nice and loose in these ones. Let's go grab a wrench. In the back side, you saw me hitting it there. It should be like permanently in there. So this, let's tighten it down. Pretty snug. I feel it tightening up a lot. But it's still got a lot of give because it's wood. But that's tight enough, not too tight. Not too terribly tight. I wonder if these are too tight, if this thing won't pivot correctly. Let's get this one back out now that we've tested it. Sometimes these things refuse to come out. Or, oh, there it is. That was a nick from the drill. I sure am tired, it looks like. But I slept a lot. I've only been up a few hours. I don't know why I feel tired, but there we go. Now it pivots perfectly. Perfect. And this is something that will probably never even get used. This is just so you don't have to take the whole pole down and a ladder against the pole might not hold up because I'm not putting that much concrete. But there, it pivots perfectly now. Nice. All right, everyone, we made it out to the edge of the woods where we're going to be putting this pole. So I think we walk in right here. This is where we're going to dig. There's no little bushes or anything. Just make a deep hole here. Go down pretty far. Hopefully I don't hit too many rocks or anything here. And then I plan on pivoting this pole so it's in the ground like that. And I'm hoping the long piece can keep it standing. That's the hope at least gotta hook the power bank up while I'm working I brought this big bin out here because we're gonna pour a bag of concrete in there I'm gonna give it a try I don't have a wheelbarrow so we'll try mixing the concrete with a hoe in there one bag at a time pour it in the hole that's a uh, post level and let's start digging I brought out some water for the concrete if we happen to not have enough can use there's a well in there that's what that bucket's covering all right everybody let's hope we don't hit a rock All right, we just dug a pretty deep hole. It's nice to see the little trees growing here. Oh, look at that. I was surprised we didn't hit it earlier. We hit the water table. Look at the water trickling in. I always knew my yard was super swampy. If I would have done this in the summer, that hole would probably be halfway up to the top. So here's my idea. I'm going to put the pole in here, maybe backfill a little teeny bit of this, just enough to pack around it, hold it up, 
Then we'll pour the three bags of concrete in there. I think that'll work nice. Then while it's setting, we'll go build a, try to build a nice community birdhouse. Let's go ahead and get this thing in and start mixing. It'll be easy to support itself, I think. Yeah, it's practically already supporting itself. The hoe will be good for packing down inside there. All right, that went wrong actually really good. Mixing concrete in that tub is so much better than using a five gallon bucket like I usually do. Now before it hardens, we're gonna go back and spray off all the stuff with the hose. Now, wood is not always straight. Two sides of it, this came out perfect. One side said it's still crooked. It's because the wood is crooked itself, but it should be straight in the ground. So now we gotta load everything back up, bring it back for cleaning. I'll get my jacket later. A little bit of dust from the concrete on the ground. It'll rain itself into the ground. And I know someone's gonna say it. No, I was not breathing in any of that dust. I made sure the wind was pushing it away. All right, everyone, I'm back about 20 minutes later and everything cleaned up spotless. I just used the jet setting on the garden hose, sprayed out the container, it's spotless. Every single piece of concrete's off of everything. Perfect. And you know, it doesn't harden that fast. You still got like a good 10, 20 minutes to work with it where it would start not coming off or you'd have to start chiseling. But we did good. Now that it's been 20 minutes, that's probably set because it's quickcrete. I'm not gonna risk even trying to touch the pole yet. I'm just gonna backfill and I made sure to save those clumps of grass and moss to put it right on the top, then it can recover as fast as possible. No, we will be back out here. We're gonna go build a birdhouse first. That's not set up yet, so just leave it alone. So, how big is this piece? Hmm. No, 
not big enough, but I got a lot more scraps. We gotta cut a bunch of two footers. Actually, 23, no, 22 and a half to be safe. Make, we gotta make a couple, 22 and a half. Twenty two and a half. And I gotta go grab a whole bunch more wood to do what I'm doing. In a couple of minutes you'll start to see what I'm doing. I don't have any plans. I am just doing my own little thing here and seeing how it comes along. That's a thing about scrap wood. This was all gonna go in the trash no matter what, so. Let's try to make something nice out of it. So what I'm planning is I'm making a communal birdhouse. So it's going to have a bunch of holes, you know, for a bunch of birds can live in it. Now, I put this on the edge of the woods, so I'm not going to build one that's, that has holes on all sides. I'm just going to make one, I don't know how many compartments it'll have yet, maybe eight or more. So this is going to be how it stands. It's going to have a pitched roof. Like that. So, um, the back is going to go on like this so it goes over the top. So this one, the front, is going to have a little overhang over all the doors. And now these pieces I'm cutting are going to go like this. So the bottom is going to have level 2, level 3, maybe level 4. And how many dividers am I going to put? I don't know yet. So it may have a dozen compartments for the birds. We will see. But I'm just cutting this, making a, just trying to find what I'm going to do. This is all free scrap wood, so let's see what we can make with it. See that light on the saw? I love that. The first time using the saw, I didn't realize that it makes a perfect guide, the shadow of the blade. front and back of it that's the one thing it's not a big deal I can take two pieces that's fine too I'll save the best things for the front we'll do all that kind of stuff on the back of it 22 and a half I may soon regret making it so big but it's okay All the levels of it and I did forget something this entire house needs pilot holes or I'm gonna maybe crack it just came back out with some drill bits it definitely needs pilot holes because I've cracked this kind of wood before it's decking if you screw it down like decking you'll be fine but like I'm doing I'm screwing into the ends and that can split it and I'm also using very unnecessarily long screws just because I have so many of them I buy in bulk and it's cheaper. And I'll go through half of that at least in a year doing projects so why keep buying little teeny tubs? I refill the little tubs with that. So I made these to go like this. That was the plan and then I was going to cut. I just why I did 22 and a half because I factored in the rest will be 24 to go over the edge. So, the first couple will be hard just because the way this is going. Just grab a fresh battery. Ow, I already know what drill bit it is. 
The only one that's shiny. I want to not put it in there too deep because I want it to go in here about the, almost as length of the screw. Then it won't be able to split it. Yeah, actually everyone, on this house, I'm not going to do what I did on my last birdhouse building video. I overbuilt it. It only needs one. Because once we start putting on the front and back, that'll hold it together. It literally just needs one screw. That last house was so overbuilt. Gonna sink it far so it doesn't crack. Alrighty. Now do the other side. sinking it, just want it flat. Now you can see how big this house will be. A whole wall of little bird apartments. Now we gotta do some measuring here of how much, how big we want these. Do we want them to be big houses like this and only have two floors? Do we want three floors? How many did I just cut? I just cut enough for four floors, but how big would they be if we do four floors? How, would they be too small? No, they wouldn't. Something like a sparrow or a finch would not have a problem with that. It'll most likely be sparrows. Those birds will all live next to each other. They don't really care. So, we got to figure out how many of these we can fit in here without the top being too cramped or something. So we have 22 inches and a half of clearance going up, just by coincidence actually. I didn't measure it from that.
All right, everyone, so this is going along pretty good. Now, I have no more pieces of wood that big. So, we're gonna have to do what you saw me do just a minute ago. See, I ran out of pieces, so I'm gonna have to start combining pieces now using the internal walls to screw them to. So, we got them all lined up, measured them, so they're all should be nice and perfect and look uniform. And this house, it'll look brown in like a year. It'll weather nicely. So now, the only thing we got to do is get a piece of wood for the top there. And the back, I can use any scrap to cover the back of this thing up. Whatever birds choose the top, they have a lower door, but a ton of space up inside the top. Now, I could have done something different, you know. Still could, technically. I could make the two small two ends really small and put one in the end there. Could do that. Wouldn't be that hard. I'll think about it. Not too bad for a couple of hours. Look what we just made. It's a 20 unit house. Wow. 
and I don't know if a single bird will ever live in it. On my property, they never use houses because they have so many options in the woods. But in the city, they'd be all over this thing. See how I built the bottom? I used a piece of scrap 4x4 four four to fit it in here to make sure it's nice and snug. We go out there right now. Each side has four right into that brand new pole. Now, I don't know how heavy that thing's going to be to lift up. Hopefully not that bad. we got to bring this out. First, got to see if the concrete is cured. Then we got to backfill because we didn't do that earlier. It's now been two hours, so quickcrete should be completely uh, hardened up enough so we can set this up. I was really tired when I started making this video. I woken up nice. Maybe I just shouldn't have started this project right when I woke up. So it's now been a couple of hours. It's quieter out. I don't hear much traffic, so that should be cured, right? Usually when I use this stuff, it's cured pretty fast. Yeah, that's set up nice. It's going to get stronger, but this pole, that's not moving anywhere. Very sandy soil. The good, rich soil is only on the top couple of inches. It's like that everywhere. It's pretty sandy. With all that concrete, now we got a lot of overburden. But that's okay. I'm just going to pile it around the pole. That'll also help it. I don't think there's going to be much settling because we're using sand. That's okay. Then I'll pile the clumps of moss around it. found that the hoe works a lot better than the shovel for packing around because you can also use it as a little tamper down in the tight hole. Just trying to get most of this pile off so it doesn't kill the ground that it's on. New stuff will of course grow but I want the moss that's here to be able to grow up through it. It's basically done growing but in the spring. chilly out, that's why I have a jacket on. It's like 38 degrees out right now. I don't think we'll have a frost tonight, but close. It's getting down there. a deep hole that started as a six foot pole. It literally goes down about three feet. Got 120 pounds of concrete down there. Yeah, this stuff packs nice. Sand. It's amazing that the forest can grow with mostly sand, but that's why it does so bad when we got a dry year horrible soil. I'm going to have to wash my hands before I'm done with this. But we got a watering can here still. Because I got to break some of the stuff off the bottom of the grass. It's just too tall. And I'll just pack it here. Wow, the ground is so cold. This is very cold. Another couple weeks, the ground will probably be frozen.
good enough. The ground will settle, it'll grow back in by itself. I hate this kind of mud. My feet feel so heavy, it's the kind of mud it sticks to you like peanut butter and you'll have like an inch of it stuck to the bottom of your shoe. All right, let's get the house on it and try to lift it up. Might be very easy. Thought it was gonna be difficult. This is a very heavy birdhouse. Wow, this is awesome. This wagon's like the perfect height to do this. might need something to hit that in there with. Yeah, there's no reason that shouldn't be going in there. This piece of wood might be a little bigger because I just built this with a two by, I mean a four by four. Now it won't come out. <sighs> come on. How is it stuck in there? There we go. They're not protruding much, but I can back them out. They're protruding so little that I can barely feel them, but that might be the problem. No, it's this. This is definitely bigger because I just bought it. Pressure treated wood shrinks fast. And the piece I just used to test it with was bought like weeks ago. Ah, but it's going in it seems. shim so it screws together straight. Does that seem good? Seems a little crooked. That, that might do it.
Looks good. Time to hoist it up. Time to lift up this giant birdhouse. Is this gonna be easy or pretty difficult? Cause this thing weighs so much. My back's actually sore from bringing, walking the pole out here earlier. Let's see how this goes. I gotta make, gotta make sure the bolt is in my hand. Cause I don't think I can balance this. And I'll come back for the nut. Oh my gosh! Whoa my gosh, that thing's so heavy. Whoa. Thankfully if I ever have to take it down again, it'll never weigh this much again. Because it's pressure treated wet. Whoa. That weighs so much, oh my gosh. Good thing I put so many screws in that. Don't want that birdhouse falling on my head. Come on. Bolt, go in there, come on. Ooh. There's so much weight on the bottom bolt that this one won't go in. Okay, come on, come on, come on. I think I need a hammer. I'm, I'm literally afraid of this thing, it's so heavy. All right, the bolt is holding it. I can't put it all the way through. It's too heavy, I gotta come back with a hammer and hope for the best. That birdhouse, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how high that thing was gonna be. Wow. Well, like I said, this thing will weigh like half its weight in the spring when it dries out. We'll take it back down and I wanna try maybe putting a few bad houses on it, although I've never had success with them once. It's one really, really high birdhouse. That is 12, 13, 14, 15 feet off the ground. 16, 17 and a half feet high total. I don't recommend anyone try lifting something like that themselves. I'm going to feel that in the morning. All right, we gotta try to straighten it out because you can obviously see it's not straight at the moment. I brought out a wrench because we're gonna try to make this thing 
straight and like without a hammer because I have to try to hammer that through. I don't know how much that thing weighs, but there's no way I'm taking that back down until this thing is dry. This wet wood is wet enough that if you hit it hard enough, you'll make a splash. Because what happened here is this isn't going in because there's so much weight pushing down on this bolt. Oh, good. It's going through. Nice. Nice. And that, did that straighten it out? Not really. But that's why we're going to tighten it really good once it's straight. It's wiggling a little bit. Hopefully the ground is enough to hold this. I don't think so. I think it'll be fine because it's not like a sail. It doesn't have much for the wind to catch. And that concrete's going to get stronger over the next week. I gotta hold it straight because I know it's not straight. Now it's straight. Now while it's straight, I gotta torque this down a good amount. I thought I was gonna be able to just leave it hand tight, but no way, no way. I don't need this thing moving a little bit in the wind, wearing out the concrete before it gets a chance to cure. Nice and tight. Not too tight, but uh, good. Now this one needs some strength. And I, I also think the bolts look nice. It looks commercial. I would have to put so many of those structure screws for myself to trust this. Is this thing combined definitely weighs more than me. I would say. What about these? I torqued these pretty good earlier. Oh, it doesn't even feel like it compared to the others. Ugh. I remember years ago my dad built a birdhouse pole like this. That's where I got the idea for this. Except his sides were pieces of uh, I-beam. Maybe a little overkill, but that's so tight now. Hopefully it holds up and that concrete keeps getting stronger. I'm not gonna mess with it any longer. Every minute it sits there, it's gonna get stronger. That's much higher than the pole my dad put up. When I was at the store looking at this 12 foot pole, I was like, I don't think that's enough, but Combined, that's 18, that's an 18 foot pole what I just made. It's buried three feet. The very top of the house is 17 feet. But that actually looks really, really nice. That looks really nice actually. And it, it stands out now because it's new. In one year, that'll be faded in the sun and it'll look like any piece of petr petrified wood. But it looks good. Everything's going to shrink slightly. There'll be little gaps in the birdhouse, but they might actually like it better, like venting. I only put that roofing shingle on there because... Just so the bird doesn't get dripped on from the big crack in the peak of the roof. It also looks way better having a black roof on it. So I think this is going to turn out really good. Look at it. That's a nice house. Thing is so high up, 